Hello, my name is Jimmy and this is the Ford F-150 Lightning. Yes, it's a fully electric pickup. It's not for the masses, but is it right for you? Keep watching and find out. Here in Canada, the Lightning comes in three trims, the base XLT and the range topper Platinum. This is the middle Lariat trim, starting at 90,000 Canadian dollars, but with options like we have here, it's 113,000 Canadian dollars. Now this is mainly due to the larger battery at 113 kilowatts, giving it a range of 515 kilometers. And here in Vancouver, this truck actually makes a whole lot of sense because, well, it's a very dense city and there are a lot of uses for an electric pickup like this. There's plenty of, well, food trucks and whatnot that need to be told, not far distances, but needs power. So this is actually quite perfect for that. But first things first, let's talk styling. I mean, it's still an F-150, so it looks like the F-150. But one of the biggest differences is right up front. You got this light bar here and of course, the absence of a grill. There is an active shutter on the bottom to increase that mileage when, well, you don't need that airflow. Personally, I don't mind the look of this. And what I love the most is the front because under here, it's absolutely massive. At 14 cubic feet, this is plenty of space for, well, really anything that you have, like my full-size stroller here. It can even carry 440 pounds. And there's a drain on the bottom for you to use it as a cooler. And there's even power outlets on the side, so you can power up whatever you need. This is one of the best utilization of a front that I've seen so far. On the side here, we got 20 inch wheels. They're a little flat for my liking, but you can get aftermarket wheels, definitely. But with those, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of range. So you gotta outweigh your, well, whatever options you have. On the side here, it looks like a charge port on the passenger side, but it is not. This is just a panel here to mimic what you have on the other side, because the driver's side is the actual charging port. This right here, well, it is fake. You do get these running boards on the side. I do like those. Not only does it make it easier to get in and out of the cab, it is extended all the way to the bedside. So you're able to get whatever's in the bed as well. And there's a light on the back. So that's all really, really nice. And I love this. Proximity door locks, not only on the front doors, but also on the rear. So you're able to get your kids or whoever else that you need to put in the back seat without fumbling and unlocking the front doors first. I love that. Moving to the back, it does say lightning here on the rear quarter. I love the font and it's blue behind. It just, well, makes it a little bit more special. Speaking of special, these tail lamps, do you like them? I mean, they're a little bit different compared to the regular F-150, but I love this like full on light bar. That's probably the best part about this rear end, but those tail lights are just a little bit blobby to me. What's kind of neat, well, not only do you have the reverse light right here in the center, they're actually really nicely integrated. However, when you drop down your tailgate, that is pointed now to the ground. So they're useless. You get no reverse lamps. However, Ford, of course, they have thought of this. You get redundant ones right here. You don't get that on the regular F-150 because you don't need to, but this is actually kind of cool. The tailgate, it is powered up and down, of course, and you get your ruler on top. You got these holes here that you can clamp your material to to cut. And of course, you get the good old ladder that a lot of Ford trucks come with. Super easy to get into the truck bed. And of course, the truck bed is special too. While other F-150s, you do get some power outlets. You don't get as much option as this. You get two 120 volt right here, which is pretty typical. There's also a 240 volt outlet. So you can plug in a welder or whatever else that you need. That's just awesome. And not only can you plug it into just regular old appliances, you can plug this into your home. You can think of this as like a Tesla Powerwall that is mobile because, well, you can. You can plug this in right into your home and power all your home's electrical needs. This is amazing. Sure, I mean, it means that you probably won't have electrical power to drive the vehicle afterwards and you have to wait for power to come back to charge your vehicle. But, you know, we'll, we'll gloss over that. <laughs> Let's check out the cabin. The Lightning. I mean, this is a crew cab F-150. So everything that you really get on a crew cab F-150 is 
exactly the same here. Plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom. It's absolutely massive in here. And if you want, you can fold up the seat so that you have storage underneath. It's great. I don't have heated seats in here. That is an option that hasn't been checked off on this specific model and no panoramic sunroof as well. That's okay, I guess, because the windows are nice and big. And of course you can open up this rear window here as well. If you're going to be carrying child seats, I am a child passenger safety technician, and I was able to fit three child seats in this vehicle. On the driver's side and the middle, I have a click link. These are infant seats, both very easy to get inside the cabin as the door swings open nice and wide here. And on the passenger side, this is a click foomf in rear facing. So if you have three kids, this truck's amazing for that. You have two sets of lower anchors, one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. Nothing in the middle, unfortunately, but you do have also three upper anchors. But because it is a truck, it is a little different how you use that upper anchor. So do check your owner's manual before installing your seats. But let's head up to the front. All right, the front seats. I mean, it's really typical F-150 in here. The seats are very comfortable. They're heated, they're cooled. But no massaging it is just the mid trim but i got no complaints about them other than the fact they look a little bit more kind of vinyl-y than i like but i mean that's totally fine it's a work truck at least a very expensive one we'll get to the price later in front of me i do have well a leather wrap steering wheel that's quite nice you got your typical buttons on here it works the way that it should it's heated as well for our canadian winters no complaints behind that a full digital cluster that's well, a little bit customizable. It's not as super customizable as some other brands, but it shows you enough for the information that you need, your range, your battery levels. It can tell you even like how much power is going to the front and rear axles. I do like that. No heads up display, unfortunately, but you do get this massive infotainment system. It's the same one out of like the Mach E as well as some other Ford products. It actually works really well. This is a little updated than the original F-150. So the menus are a little different. And to me, they actually just work a little bit better because of that. You get wireless CarPlay in here, but I do have my cable for easy charging. Even though there is a Qi wireless charger, well, we all know that Qi wireless chargers aren't the most stable. A cable is always just a little bit better. I mean, the overall system works fine. It is a little frustrating to go into like the menus on the bottom to kind of configure your climate controls. But other than that, I got no complaints there. The center console is your typical F-150. There's a button here in the middle to push to move the shifter down. And then you get a table so you can do your work, whatever it is that's here. Because you do have a 120 volt, 20 amp outlet here. It's also another one in the back, a 20 amp outlet. You can literally put a microwave in here and you don't have to worry about blowing that fuse. And I mean, if you want to get a blender, that's not a problem at all. That's really, really convenient. Overall, the interior, I mean, it's fine. It's a typical F-150 interior. There's nothing wrong with it. Some of the materials are a little questionable, like just this on the side, there's not as, well, premium feeling as I would like, but you do get a little bit of this fake wood on here, which actually kind of look cool. And there's this brushed aluminum or metal that's clearly plastic here in the center as well. Like, like I said, you, you know, you can't really complain about it. It's not bad, but it's definitely not the greatest. In my opinion, the Ram 1500 yeah, takes a level up in terms of just how luscious the interior feels. But it's not all about that. Let's talk about the powertrain before we go for a drive here. Under the floor, we got a 113 kilowatt battery. That feeds power to the front and rear axles in a total of 580 horsepower and 770 pound-feet of torque. For lesser models, that's 452 horsepower. This battery itself, you can charge it from 15 to 80% with level 3 in 44 minutes. In terms of towing, well, you're able to tow 7,700 pounds with the max towing package, that's 10,000 pounds, and has a payload of 1,800. All right, driving the F-150 Lightning. I mean, it really drives like a regular F-150, but with a whole lot more power, as I will now demonstrate with a quick launch. In normal mode, I'm just gonna floor it. Oh, that's a lot of force. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's what 775 pound-feet of torque gets you. Plenty of 
well, power off the line. It's an electric truck. What do you expect? This thing is not going to be slow at all. Merging, no problem. Passing anyone on the highway, not a problem. Getting right up close to the person in front of you, <laughs> not a problem. This is mighty quick. And yeah, all that power just equates to plenty of pulling power as well. You can tow, you can do all the things that you normally need to do, but of course, when you're towing with an electric truck, you're gonna lose a little bit of range. What I do like about this is just how comfortable the truck is as a whole. The suspension is very different on this than your standard F-150. There's no live rear axle on the back. This, well, has independent rear suspension with one of the largest, well, lower A-arms I have ever seen. They're absolutely massive, <laughs> but it has to, right? There's a lot of weight that it's carrying here, and there's a whole lot of torque that's being put to those rear suspension components. So overall, it's kind of cool. And yeah, you can still go off-road in it. There's the off-road modes that you can have. There's a locking differential as well. You can do all the things that you need to do in a regular F-150. Just a whole lot quicker. What's not to love? Maybe just how it corners. Because while it accelerates like a sports car does, because it... You know what? I'm going to beat this truck. <laughs> Oh, there's a Honda Fit in front of me. <laughs> it's a... Uh... <laughs> That's the power of the F-150 Lightning. Whenever you need to pass someone or merge and there's a big truck in your way, you don't have to worry. But going back, the one thing you're going to just be a little bit disappointed about is the handling of this truck. Now, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's a truck. It's designed as a truck, not a sports car. When you have this much power, your brain thinks it's a sports car when it's really not. Because once you throw it into a corner, yeah, this truck is, uh, it kind of gives up. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, no one's going to be throwing it around a corner. But it just, with this much power and this kind of acceleration, you, you want to push it a little bit more. And when you do, it just kind of gives up on you. The suspension is so soft that... If there's a little bit of a bump mid corner, it just kind of like unsettles the entire truck. It feels really, really odd. And into a corner, especially with the snow tires that I have on, it just has very limited grip. So there's that as well. But then again, it's not designed to be some sort of sports truck. It's not, well, an F-150 Lightning that it used to be or a Ram 1500 SRT10. This is just an electric truck. That's really what it is. And on the highway, it's, well, superbly comfortable. You turn on the Blue Cruise that this has, and you're able to just let it drive itself. Well, not fully. This doesn't have like the full on Blue Cruise. This just has the adaptive cruise and the lane centering. And that itself does work really well already. So it's less to complain about there than normal. Overall, I mean, throughout this week, I have thoroughly enjoyed this truck. I, I get, you know, EVs are supposed to be efficient, little runabouts, but here in Vancouver, a lot of people just want a truck and they want a truck because they want something absolutely massive. And this is, it's basically the length of my entire garage, but it's still delivers so much performance and so much in terms of just efficiency like no it's not as efficient as a nissan leaf would be or tesla model 3 that's going to be much better but this as a package to give you all of this like space especially with that frunk it just makes a whole lot of sense and with the larger battery that's on board here i don't really have to think too much about range because a lot of Vancouver drivers here, even if they have a truck, a regular gasoline truck, it's never loaded. It's just a truck that's for, I don't know, whatever reason that they want a truck for. You don't need that towing distance. You don't need that kind of capability. And that's what this F-150 Lightning is about. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. Okay, that was a little... <laughs> 
Once again, don't don't go quick in corners. Not designed for that. But like this video if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know what your thoughts are on the F-150 Lightning. I actually have seen a lot of them here on Vancouver roads, and I totally get it. I totally do. I do want one of these, but maybe in an expedition form. An F, like an EV expedition? That makes so much sense. And it can because it's basically, well, the exact same frame underneath. So maybe I'll wait for that. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Take care.